for a walk through God's word. We're going a big overview and we're about halfway through the Old Testament. So thanks again for giving me five to seven minutes. We're going to be in, <clears throat> excuse me, the prophets of the Old Testament. We're going to look at five prophets and we're going to call them the major prophets. So if you want to find the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, that's where we're going to be. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll give you a minute to find that. Remember, we're going to do a review of the study of God's word. The Bible is spoken, literally it is breathed like God breathed out or spoke creation. God spoke his word to human authors who then wrote it down and they wrote down the words that God said to them. So the words that you and I read every day when we do this are the words that are spoken by God himself. There are 66 different books written over 1,600 years. The authors included kings, prophets, leaders, uh, and apostles or disciples. The Old Testament, remember, is written mostly in Hebrew, while the New Testament is written mostly in Greek. Now, I want to pause and add another facet to this. The Old Testament is all about the promised Messiah is coming. Here comes the promised Messiah. This is what you're to look for. These are the characteristics that you are to watch out for. That's what the Old Testament is all about. The New Testament and points back to the life of Christ saying Jesus is the promised Messiah. This is what he's done and this is how he fulfilled all the prophecies in the Old Testament. So the Old Testament points to the cross, the New Testament reflects on the cross, and everything revolves and hinges on the life of Christ. The Bible was organized by rabbis. It was organized by church councils based on specific guidelines. And before the printing press in 1455, the Bible was copied by hand. The people that did that were called scribes, and they had a meticulous process for ensuring that it was copied correctly. Have you found the major prophets yet? There's five of them. Remember, I, I've already mentioned them once. They're Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Now, over the next three days, we're going to be looking at all of the prophets. So let me take a really big uh, swipe here, and let me get a little bit specific. In the Old Testament times, there was a prophet. A prophet was a man that stood between God and his people, because a holy God could not talk to an unholy people. So he appointed a man, a prophet, that God spoke to this prophet, this man. This man would then speak to the people. The people would speak to this man, and then this man would speak to God. So you see there's a intercessor between there, and that would be the prophet. The prophet was the mouthpiece of God. That is different than today. And why is it different to, than today? Because of what Jesus did on the cross. So as we look at the Old Testament, look at it as an intermediator, someone between God and people. Now, there's there's going to be 17 prophetic books or books of the prophets. There's five major prophets. Why do we call them major? And then tomorrow and Monday, we're going to look at the minor prophets. The difference between the major and the minor prophets is the length of the book. It has nothing to do with the quality of their message or the importance of their message. It's all spoken by God what it has to do with is the length of the book. So these are some of the longest books that we're going to have. And that's why we call them major prophets. And there's five of them. These books include warnings of judgment, hope, and a near future event, but also a distant future, meaning that they're these prophets are going to talk about something's going to happen in the weeks, months, and couple years to come. And then they're also going to give prophecy of things yet to come when Jesus comes back. And we're still waiting for Jesus to come back. So some of these books are going to speak into that. Uh, idea of Christ and that truth, biblical truth that Jesus is coming back. They all point to the hope of a coming Messiah, that Messiah's name, his name is Jesus Christ. So let's look at the books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. The book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah has a great deal to do about salvation. It's possible 
and is possible only through repentance and hope in the coming Messiah. What does it mean to repent? Repentance means to say you're sorry and to change direction. So to put it in an object lesson, if you're going east and all of a sudden you repent, you change direction 180 degrees and you don't go east anymore, you go west. That's what it means to repent. You're walking one way, you understand you're walking the wrong way, you repent, you say you're sorry, and you do an about face. That's what it means to have repentance in God, to God, that you are walking away from God, you say you're sorry, you admit the wrong, and then you walk towards him, you walk with him, and you walk according to his word. Probably one of the most famous passages is Isaiah 53, in some of Isaiah chapter 52, and it deals with the suffering servant. And it talks about the prophecy of what the Messiah is going to suffer. And we now see and we believe that that is a promise and a fulfillment that Christ did on the cross. And if you want to, I don't want to say a fun read, it's a hard read. It's a difficult read. But it's very interesting to read Isaiah 52 and Isaiah 53, and then go read the crucifixion of Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and or John. And a lot of that is going to line up. And the, if you ever want to witness to a Jewish person, you take them to Isaiah 53, and they're going to have a difficult time trying to explain away what Christ dealt with on the cross and what he endured on the cross. The book of Jeremiah is to warn the kingdom of Judah. Remember, the kingdom of Israel was split into two under Rehoboam. The kingdom of Judah is a southern kingdom. And Jeremiah warns them that their destruction is coming. And you better prepare for the coming Babylonian invaders. And you're going to have to submit to them. So this is not an easy read. This is a difficult read talking to Israel or Judah, I should say, that tough times are coming. Lamentations is written by Jeremiah and he is lamenting. He has heartache for the people of Judah because they're going to lose everything. They're going to lose their land. They're going to lose their city. They're going to lose their freedom. They're going to lose their family members. They're going to lose their temple. And Jeremiah, he is lamenting. He is mourning. He is crying out because he knows this is coming. Why does he know this is coming? Because God told Jeremiah and Jeremiah is telling the people and nobody likes to be the bearer of bad news. But that is what Lamentations is about. Hard read, difficult read, but it's an important read to know what is coming for Israel, specifically Judah, the southern kingdom, when you don't live in obedience to what God has said. Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel wrote Ezekiel. Side note, let me go back and make sure I, I clarify that each one of these books, their title is who wrote them. So Jeremiah wrote Jeremiah, Isaiah wrote Isaiah, Ezekiel wrote Ezekiel, uh, Daniel wrote Daniel. So Ezekiel, he confronted the people about their sin. And we see the grace of God and the mercy of God because God is giving his people one 